thank you so now we are going to see so far we have seen maimo and uh, array antennas like you know uh, maimo antennas and some some of part of array antennas uh, i think one particular difference i could i forgot to tell you that the different main difference between a maimo and a array is that maimo antenna will be fed individually each antenna will be fed individual exit with ex individual excitation right so but array antenna so one input will be you know uh, um, uh, one input will be there that will be splitted and then fed to each element okay so but in uh, maimo antenna it is a individual excitation individual uh, input will be there for each element okay that's how uh, differentiate between uh, maimo and uh, because all are you know uh, two two or more elements right maimo also has two or more elements and uh, array also has two or more elements so how we have to differentiate is that so here the in array it is only single input will be given to all the elements okay therefore we are combining the effect of uh, each element and then uh, we are getting the uh, you know uh, <coughs> you know enhance the gain or enhance the you know beam forming or anything whatever whatsoever maybe okay but in mimo we are we are giving inputs to each element individually okay uh, that's why we are talking of uh, isolation and all okay uh, the each input uh, each antenna should be isolated from others okay that's a diff key difference between mimo and uh, phased array, array any array for that matter so now uh, as i mentioned before here uh, so far we have seen that all elements are array also uh, no, are given input you know directly like uh, uh, directly and the elements are connected with the uh, excitation uh, a lion or a probe or whatever it may be but in reflector array it is spatially fed okay the in uh, in phased array in array you will have a patch element okay you are feeding it using uh, for example uh, you have a two element uh, array okay so you are uh, you know you have a, a power uh, divider like this and a splitter like this and then you are exiting here and both are fed in uh, fed from here okay using you know uh, feeding feed line uh, series fed or uh, parallel fed or anything okay corporate feed okay so it is fed uh, physically okay whereas in this reflector antennas it is fed for example it is spatially okay how it does is you will have a horn antenna here and it is uh, you know it is fed to each element individually okay especially okay so this reflector array came from um, a parabolic reflector actually the how the evolution is initially the parabolic reflector is in, uh, evolved and uh, so alternate to parabolic reflector was it is uh, lens antennas okay so lens antennas also giving uh, collimation of beams okay, that we will uh, discuss later okay uh, then lens antennas so the alternate to parabolic reflector lens antennas are evolved so it is a, a metal based reflector here it is you know dielectric based lens okay so where the main purpose is that collimation okay now uh, then it was both are heavy and then um, the it's a cube size is uh, the is huge and then um, so then 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 the reflector array evolved okay it is a you know printed circuit printed board that we'll see okay later so this is our reflector array evolved okay next is that these are on the output uh, sorry outline of my presentation introduction to reflector array antennas first we will see introduction and then uh, how it is being designed and analyzed and uh, some of the factors okay i thought of covering this for uh, uh, how the fact uh, how the reflector bandwidth is affected and bandwidth enhancement methods and some of the reflector prototypes that we i think uh, we have developed for our project and all and uh, some of the various lens antennas right from uh, simple lens and metal back lens and also the artificial lens we'll see and summary okay and references so now let's see uh, how um, why uh, how a reflector came into picture right so it is a concept is derived from parabolic reflector okay so parabolic reflector for example let's see let's take a center fed parabolic reflector you have a feed horn here it emits as you know that it emits spherical waves okay so you have a reflector of size you know uh, effector of a shape in the, in the spherical shape okay uh, okay here what you are doing is you are compensating the phase of uh, this uh, wave and then therefore you are getting the planar wave front okay this kind of collimation you can say okay planar wave front let's say 
if you have only flat reflector what happens when a spherical wave hit on the flat reflector what happens what happens is you will have a, you will see the phase difference here huge phase difference here okay so in order to compensate these phases right so if if uh, if i want to get uh, uh, the reflected signal at the same time at this point okay or collimation at this point is same time then what i have to do i have to correct this phase therefore i will get the uh, collimation of behind this piece okay how it is done by employing the printed elements okay this is called as reflect array okay so here each element is an uh, you know each uh, it's a printed elements are there okay and uh, each elements will be uh, specially fed by this feed horn and this will this will correct the phase and then uh, uh, you know reflect and reflect back and then you can see that uh, collimation is established okay now let's see how it uh, how, what is the evolution of reflect array it is initially not started with the printed element and all it has started implemented you know initially it was implemented with the wave gates okay how they have done is that so at the center uh, if you are you know uh, when the feed horn emits you will get the spherical wave something like this at the excitation point okay here um, you know this reaches first okay and this reaches last okay this uh, this part of the signal reaches last and this reaches first okay what i have to do i have to delay this much and uh, uh, when compared to the one uh, to be delayed here okay so what i have, what i am doing is i am delaying this one okay uh, for a longer time so that uh, this reaches here and then all will uh, come back at the same time that's how that's what is happening so that's why they are keeping the wavelength of the uh, like uh, length of the wave gate as uh, large at this point and small at this point yeah okay this is how they achieved the phase difference okay sorry phase corrections okay next is that by employing the uh, dipole integrated uh, dipole integrated with the diode elements what they have done is that by controlling the biasing of the uh, element they could uh, achieve the required phase shift okay but it was very narrow band and uh, next is what they have done is that next element what they have in uh, felen uh, were uh, uh, proposed the four arm spiral with the switching diodes here what they have done is that the phase is achieved by uh, like a switching uh, the diodes therefore the you know connection of spiral this way sometimes this connect this spiral is connected sometimes these two spirals are connected sometimes these two spirals are connected so based on which we can change the phase shifts okay phase correction can be employed so when the printed element uh, technology evolved in the year uh, in the year of uh, i think 70 75 or 73 so that time uh, they proposed uh, pa patch antenna with the attached uh, transmission line stub open and the transmission line stub here what they are doing is when a wave incident on this element this will follow the path and it will go here and again comes back and then gets reflected so uh, based on the length of the stub you can control the phase at the each point okay then um, so so this was a highly resonant so in order to avoid that they went with the variable size here you can see that all patch sizes are same only the uh, length of the stub is different whereas here then they it is it's a highly resonant type and then also design wise it is too difficult so what they have done is, then they proposed in the year i think guang in in the year 1991 pozar in the year 1993 they proposed a variable size patch antenna so when you vary the size of the patch patch is a variable size patches okay when you vary the size of the patch therefore you are controlling the phase phases okay at each point now why we go for reflector array uh, let's see okay uh, this is uh, actually um, parabolic reflector okay parabolic reflector you can see that it is occupying this much space okay this much space that is a one reason uh, why we go for, uh, but in uh, a reflector it is too compact you can see that uh, this can this can be suitable for you know uh, large satellites but for cube satellites and all it we cannot have afford to have this much space so what they are doing is see you can see here that it's a cube satellite launched by nasa okay here what they have done they have integrated uh, you know reflector ray as well as the solar at the back side okay so both are you know same platform and also they they have a hinges at between the reflector rays therefore 
we can uh, do the reliable folding mechanism okay they can just uh, you know uh, bend uh, you know uh, put like this and then fold it along the along the surface of this uh, uh, satellite module okay now next advantage is that if you want to uh, achieve the shaped beam for example you want you have a india coverage like this okay In, sorry uh, india uh, something like this okay if you transmit with a conventional antenna you cannot cover this region okay it will be a circular kind of beam okay if you want to cover only this india and uh, not covering the nearby country because you know uh, pakistan we may in the from our satellites they may uh, in, in nearby countries also will receive in order to avoid that they go for shaped shaped beam uh, kind of thing so if you want to achieve this kind of shaped beam what you have to do is straightforward uh, uh, solution is that shaping the reflector in, in the case of parabolic reflector what they will do they will shape the reflector okay so they will shape the reflector therefore the control in the phase correction in order to get the desired uh, you know uh, desired um, uh, shaped beam okay uh, so uh, here uh, in order to then this is the uh, we have to shape the reflector the main problem here is the shaping how do you ensure for example uh, very uh, for example this uh, this bending length is very minimal uh, you know 1 1 mm or uh, below 0.5 mm below 0.2 mm how do you ensure that uh, because we have fabrication tolerance or tolerance how do you ensure that this bend is happened or not we have to see microscopic level and then see so that is one uh, disadvantage second thing is that sensitivity of this uh, bending that also need to be uh, taking care so in order to avoid that what they have done is that um, you know if you have a reflector a in uh, by choosing the appropriate elements and the appropriate phase combination it's a flat only still it, it's a flat reflector reflector a you can uh, achieve this uh, shaped beam okay how you are going to do yeah, by apply employing the appropriate phase phase distribution and also the um, employing the uh, you know appropriate phase uh, you know uh, printed elements you can achieve this shaped beam uh, whichever beam uh, shaped beam you can you want okay the third advantage is that uh, you can see here that if you uh, third advantage of reflector is that if you want to have two beams okay if you want to have a uh, two beams what you have to do in the case of parabolic reflector you have to go for uh, two reflectors you can see here that feed one here it will hit on this reflector and then uh, you know illuminate this beam okay okay and you have a feed here feed two here it you know reflect uh, it gets uh, impinge on the sub reflector gets the reflector by this main reflector and you will get the another beam okay so this is a system it is too complex okay in order to avoid that we can go for you know uh, uh, reflector a multi layer reflector a where you can use the same two feeds one layer will be uh, you know operating in one vertical polarization another layer will be operating in another uh, uh, sorry horizontal polarization so this is a great advantage the fourth advantage is that you can employ multiple frequencies also okay how the same layer for example you can see here that one layer you are printing the uh, you know uh, k a band uh, patches patch elements okay and another layer you are printing the x band uh, patch elements so therefore you are ensuring the dual band operation also so so far uh, to consolidate what is the advantage of refractory the first one is the space uh, is um, you know conserved and then it is uh, as, uh, it is occupying less space we can uh, you know do it a uh, folding mechanism also and in refractor also it is available but it's somewhat complex than this okay second thing is that shaped beam uh, 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 can be done with this flat kind of uh, surfaces instead uh, against the, the shaped uh, parabolic refractor okay the third advantage is that you can achieve the dual beam operation with a simple uh, you know uh, kind of refractory structure the fourth advantage is that you can achieve the dual band operation okay by employing the by integrating the two band elements in the same uh, uh, you know pcb in the say, different layers okay these are all advantages so features are whatever i mentioned before okay it is a compactness low color polarization shared aperture also you can enhance using how it is for example see uh, how it is so you have a reflector here and you have a transmitter right here so uh, you have feed here okay okay so one band it will act as a reflector right okay so it gets reflected here in another band it will be a transparent 
then it will be transmitting so because you know on the ground plane instead of ground plane you are using transmit array one band reflects other band it will transmit so we are you know achieving the both the operation transmit array as well as the reflector operation so therefore it is called as shared aperture and uh, limitation is bandwidth is um, uh, decided by both feed and antenna elements okay in the case of parabolic reflector ideally parabolic reflector gives infinite bandwidth okay it is only the feed decides the bandwidth whereas here element also dictates the bandwidth okay and power handling and uh, dielectric losses which is unavoidable okay so how now let's see how the reflector is being designed first what we will do there is a two kind of design one is here first we have to design the element and then we will construct the reflector system okay so how so uh, element design let's see first element design so what kind of element we are going to employ either it is a you know a, a printed element or a wavegate element but now no, there is no question of wavegate element at all printed element what sort of element we are going to employ and what are all element parameters like you know phase um, uh, scattering parameters phase and uh, reflection magnitude we will estimate that we will see later okay and reflector system level design what we will do what beam direction we want okay and what gain we are expecting based on that why based on the gain the aperture size will be dictated because you know that gain is directly proportional to aperture size you might have studied uh, directivity is 4 pi ae by lambda square right so uh, so aperture size dictates the gain and also the feed location okay then beam direction dictates the beam direction and also the gain dictates the phase compensation and uh, based on the element parameter and phase compensation you will optimize the uh, reflector ray and then you know you will prototype and then measure you will measure patterns bandwidth the directivity gain axial ratio if it is a circularly polarized one polarization side lobe level and many more parameters okay now let's say design steps the first and foremost thing is that we have to find out what phase need to be compensated at each point okay you can see here that so it is not a uh, parabolic uh, you know kind of parabolic reflector it is a flat surface right so we have to compensate uh, instead of see you have to mimic this uh, parabolic operation right parabolic reflector operation how we are going to operate uh, for example here a parabolic reflector the shape itself is giving the phase correction whereas here it's a pl flat surface therefore i have to give phase correction at each point in order to get the uh, desired beam okay uh, you can see that each point what phase to be compensated that is uh, derived by you know fr from parabolic equation only parabolic replication only this uh, phase shift is estimated so this is theta b and phi b is, is the beam direction so which direction we are going to we are ex expecting the beam for example this is the reflector a i want in broadside or you know uh, broadside means you know uh, 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 orthogonal to that and or in specific direction for example 60 degree or 40 degree okay so based on that uh, this uh, phase to be compensated at each position is estimated okay so that is the if you estimate and plot it using matlab you will get, uh, get something like this okay you can see here that red being you know i think 360 and the blue being zero degree so zero degree 360 degree so these are the phase compensation plot okay next is that estimation of reflection phase curve for you know uh, unit cell element so you have a unit cell element first what i have to do what i have to estimate we have to estimate the reflection phase of offered by the each element okay so reflection phase and uh, reflection magnitude are you know uh, you know one uh, because you know it's a real real uh, uh, and the same you can see that that say the reflection magnitude is um, if you have if you see the dip in the reflection magnitude plot so which means uh, it is resonating at this frequency so in that frequency we will get this zero degree phase and uh, so this uh, it's a comparison of uh, reflection phase plot and amplitude plot which means s1 and amplitude plot and phase plot okay now this phase diagram this phase diagram means s curve we also call it as s curve okay depends upon the uh, several parameters one is shape and size of the element okay so and also the scattering at the edges of the element scattering at the edges of the element substrate thickness that uh, plays a major role here okay and the dielectric constant of the substrate loss tangent okay and uh, angle of incidence so and the periodicity of the array and uh, many more okay so you can see here that so what are all components are there 
you know uh, while estimating a phase right phase offered by this element is there are several components are there one is incident field okay incident field it depends on the incident field and uh, re-rated component by the secondary services which means when the field is incident on the uh, patch and uh, patch patch sorry not patch and right? it's patch element okay incident on the patch it will really induces the current source here okay current uh, current density here and then therefore which in turn uh, introduce the uh, fields so that's how uh, ampere maxwell law says uh, is that is okay so if you have a current surface current density it will introduce the uh, it will introduce the fields right okay so when you have a surface current density which introduce the fields okay and uh, specular reflection from uh, specular common uh, ground plane also reflects right so uh, so this incident field re-rated field plus a reflection from the ground plane uh, whatever field get reflected from the ground plane plus a scattered component of the patch element so all together uh, will contribute for the phase of the each element okay now how the element is analyzed using a simulation tool there are uh, three methods are there one is first method is isolated element approach what we will do here is no e wall and h wall it is a called as tem waveguide method okay so we'll exit here okay your patch is here it's a kind of isolated element where you are not assuming that there is a array element is there nearby okay then you will estimate the uh, phases okay reflection phases uh, um, next uh, practically it can be measured using you uh, know waveguides okay waveguides here uh, we'll exit the te10 mode and then we'll place the underlayment uh, you know patch patch element at the aperture of the uh, uh, waveguide and then you can measure the uh, reflection coefficient and also the phase okay next is that infinite array approach okay infinite array approach is nothing but here you uh, know this this is not you know uh, it will it's not going to be isolated element anymore in the practice right so in practice we will have a nearby element so what will happen is this will excite okay it will give when it is isolated mode it will give uh, whatever phase it gives right when they when it play when it be placed with the another element uh, sitting at uh, side so it will be it may this uh, this element may uh, ha, talk to talk to the this element okay so there will be a, some kind of mutual coupling okay so in order to estimate that there is a infinite error approach is there where how it is estimating is that you have element of some size the same size is duplicated everywhere and then estimate so in the presence of these elements how my uh, reflection phase characteristics of uh, my desired element is varying that we are seeing okay but it's also a not a ideal approach that's why they went for surrounded element approach how they are exiting so how they are doing is that see you have an element here okay so nearby elements you are designing the element and uh, with a uh, certain phase uh, that offers certain phase okay and um, uh, whatever uh, will be the practical way like you know you will uh, place the element of different size and uh, neighboring cells as different size and then uh, it's a kind of a practical element okay then you will capture the reflection pass characteristics of your element this is called as surrounded element approach this is uh, more close to uh, what is in, what is in practice because you know you will in practice you will have one element this element will be of uh, another size this element will be of another size this element will be of another size so that is what they are emulating here in this surrounded element approach okay now let's see reflectory design consolidating the reflectory design first what you will do you will estimate the phase to be compensated at each position of an array okay next you will estimate the reflection phase offered by the element okay then you will design this is called as interpolation what they are doing is that see for example you have a phase here some phase here okay for example 300 degree 500 600 degree okay so 600 degree wherever it comes okay in the element okay so the common between this reflection phase uh, plot and uh, this plot is that phase okay you want to compensate 500 degree here okay here wow, wow, which element size gives 500 degree this is the element size gives 500, 500, 500 degree okay so what i have to do the element of size 3.1 mm i have to place it over here okay similarly for example uh, this is 200 degree okay so whichever element gives 200 degree uh, whichever element size gives 200 degree i will place the element of size for example 2.4 is giving 200 degree so 2.4 uh, mm size element i play, i will place it here so this is how i will place it and then uh, finally design this array 
Repetry. Okay. Now Repetry system has this. So far we have seen only the Repetry design. Now we'll go and see Repetry system. So what is that system? We'll have a Repetry printer elements will be there, and you'll have feed horn. Okay. Feed horn will have feed pattern. Okay. This feed pattern will dictates the excitation at each point. Okay. This will also dictates the feed tapper. Tapper means what? So for example, center. Uh, you know, if the as the beam is like this. Center, you will have a higher excitation. Uh, at the edge, you will have a lower excitation, right? This is called the comp the ratio between these two is the taper. Okay, taper means what? So how much is you are exciting in this uh, center element? How much you are going to excite in the edge element? Let us we'll see uh, one by one. Okay, so this uh, feed pattern dictates the excitation at each element. Okay, and uh, focal distance also dictates the excitation at each element because when you move the feed horn is going to have a same pattern. Okay, but when you move the focal distance, therefore you can control the excitation at each element. Okay, next is that. Um, so you have element. Element has its own pattern. Okay, so here element pattern also may plays a major role because, uh, for example, this element pattern like this. This will have a element pattern like this. So constructively, it will uh, add together. Uh, it has to add together to get the uh, desired pattern. Okay. Second point is that, for example, it has uh, this pattern like this. So central element anyway will receive because it is uh, you know uh, it is in the vicinity of this uh, beam direction is almost you know um, straightforward. But when the element is in the edge, okay, for example, the the beam width of this element is for example thirty degree, okay. For example, the beam width of this uh, element pattern is thirty degree, okay. But your incident angle is minus forty degree. Okay, forty degree. Forty degree means here. Okay, your beam width is three dB beam width is here thirty degree. But your incident angle is forty degree. What will happen? You are receiving very less power because already you are receiving uh, due to feed tapper. Already you are receiving very less power. But if you are having element pattern is as uh, only thirty dB, but you are receiving at forty dB, forty dB, forty degree. Okay, what happens? Is, let me explain. I think. Uh, so this is the element pattern okay this is the 3db point okay this is called as you know this we measure and then see that it is 30 degree okay if my exit element is you know receiving in this uh, like a exit if a feed horn is exiting in this direction so here it is uh, actually you know half of the power minus 3db point so here it may be minus 6db point okay so element cannot receive uh, element you know um, uh, here it is. Uh, if you are receiving within this range, then you will be getting at least uh, fifty percent of the power. But uh, element pattern itself, uh, you know, here it is minus six dB. Then whatever you will receive is very less. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, you know effect of element pattern. Next is that. Now let's consolidate and see what all factors affect the refractor bandwidth. So the thickness and relativity constant of the substrate that we will discuss that we have already discussed. Geometry of the array refractory because it's a flat or a bended or you know uh, triangular size are different. Okay, and the conductor and dielectric losses. Okay, and uh, while simulation, no, we are only considering the normal incidence over the element. So for example, you know you are uh, having patch element here. You are only considering the normal incidence at the element surface. But in practice, it won't be normal incidence because you have feed horn here. Okay, uh, you will get the you know. Uh, kind of a spherical wave thing, so it is. It will not be a normal incidence. And uh, for example, if you, if it is the uh, edge element, no, you will always receive in this direction. So not in the uh, you will not receive in the normal direction, right? Normal incidence. Okay, you will receive in the angle of incidence will be there. Some angle of incidence will be there. So when you are in center, you may expect a normal incidence. But when you are in the edge of the element, edge of the array, you will not expect a normal incidence, right? So that's an assumption we are making, but uh, it will not hold good in the real time environment. So therefore, that affects the refractory, uh, uh, you know, performance. So I should have mentioned only performance. Okay. Phase error in the element placement. For example, you are, uh, for example, you have refractory. You want to compensate at each position with the different phase values. So here I want to compensate with the three hundred three hundred degree. But how do you ensure that with the so much uh, for for so many frequency, so much frequency range? How do you ensure that? For example, this element is designed for designed at one frequency. Okay. How do you ensure that whether you are uh, 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 no achieving three hundred degree or not? Okay. 
and also for example you are, you are achieving 300 degree but you will not have uh, the corresponding element size so what you will do for example 3.1 mm you are getting a 320 degree 3.2 mm you are getting 280 degree so what you will do 3.1 mm or 3.2 mm you will use okay so in that case how do you ensure that this uh, you know uh, the correct phase is uh, uh, compensated and uh, this we have already discussed so phi taper symmetry of the pattern uh, that is emitted by the phi horn polarization phase center that dictates the focal point array and system parameter interval spacing because you know mutual coupling is there when you have a element uh, like this okay and uh, this will talk to each other so interval and spacing play a major role and mutual coupling and um, focal distance and fid ratio it is array system level parameters okay i think you know i have worked on some of the bandwidth enhancement methods so in consolidate so element can be uh, bandwidth can be enhanced by using you know uh, uh, you know uh, a thick substrate okay so the thick substrate can be done uh, using uh, two methods one is you will use you know uh, thick substrate one single substrate as a thick substrate but that is much costlier so uh, the other approach is that what you will do you will use you know uh, rogers or uh, any other uh, substrate with a certain thickness and the remaining uh, thickness what you will fill with the you will you can fill with the foam or you know any other material okay so air gap this is the another method third second approach is that you can design a different kind of elements that gives uh, offers wider bandwidth for example multi cross loops parallel dipoles concentric rings and so on okay uh, so several uh, things are there okay now uh, wide band element design now let's see wide band element design how it is done one is see you can see that multi cross rings so each ring will have its own resonances so how it works is for example you have each ring will have its own resonances okay okay so okay kind of thing okay so now if you if you place the element in a proper manner adjusting the gap between them and also the optimize the size of the element therefore you can achieve the what you can achieve you can achieve the wider bandwidth okay you can plot like this okay so for example this is the 10 db degree for example uh, uh, um, uh, sorry uh, sorry sorry it's uh, for example if it is the uh, for example if you design a patch antenna if you are you are uh, mentioning a 10 db reflection coefficient right so if you measure here so all the three elements are so these this, this is the overlapping bandwidth okay this much bandwidth you can achieve by optimally placing the elements together okay it's a collocated manner so that's how that's the same principle works here also for the reflector array what they are doing is each element will be excited with the different uh, sorry uh, offers uh, different uh, resonances okay by combining all all uh, four together you can achieve the wider bandwidth that's how the second uh, approach is that parallel dipoles here you can obviously you can see that this will resonate in one frequency one uh, frequency means what it will have certain bandwidth right it will not be you know i say you know exactly one frequency it will not work in exactly one frequency it will have certain you know some amount of bandwidth for example 5% or 2% and this, this is operating in another frequency with a certain bandwidth this is operating in another frequency so by placing all the elements together and by optimizing the spacing between them size of the element you can achieve the wider bandwidth this is how you will achieve the wider bandwidth so this is called as the, this is the reflection phase plot versus frequency you can see that multiple frequency it is crossing the zero zero means i as, as i said before it is a resonance here it is happening here it is happening and here it is happening okay so it is operating in multiple ways so surface current distribution you can see that one frequency this is uh, you know excited excited the other frequencies you can see all three are excited and another frequency the side elements are excited uh, means uh, side elements are uh, you know uh, contributing okay this is the reflection phase the one point i forgot to tell you that you no know, reflection phase should be as smooth as possible okay because uh, for example you are placing the element okay uh, for uh, for example 300 degree you are placing the element uh, that uh, element that offers 300 degree but um, when you, you change the frequency right so because it is operating in wide wide bandwidth we are plotting for only one frequency right so if you are changing the if you are uh, operating in uh, for example 11 gigahertz to 14 gigahertz okay so uh, you have you might have designed for 
12 gigahertz uh, frequency so how it behaves for example same uh, and the 12 gigahertz only you are uh, estimated the uh, phase compensation phase to be compensated at each point right so for 12 gigahertz it is should be 300 degree but for 11 gigahertz what will it will be it will be different some uh, it will be obviously different right so um, you have to design element such a way that it is not uh, changing the you know uh, the phase uh, drastically okay for example three instead of 300 degree you can have some kind of tolerance the acceptable tolerance is based on the literature is plus 45 degree plus or minus 45 degree so 12 gigahertz it is giving the 300 degree uh, phase shift 11 gigahertz it is giving it should give at least you know 290 degree or 285 degree or 295 degree okay therefore the refractory performance will not be affected okay so that's why uh, the refractory phase variation uh, as a function of uh, element size or frequency it should be smooth as possible as smooth as possible okay now these are all the performance of some of the wide band elements you can see here these are all the different kind of structures they use for uh, uh, you know um, they, uh, people have reported okay and the deployment of development of wide band spectral antennas these are antennas i think we just to show the prototypes okay uh, and this antenna we developed and then we measured at uh, ssn only okay see this is all the radiation pattern we got for this uh, this is another uh, quite interesting study we made uh, doing this infrared estimation is that see the um, we had a we have uh, measured the gain this is the simulated gain this is the measured gain okay so as i mentioned before substrate will play a major role in the refractory performance right so here what was happened this gap was huge okay more than 4, 4 db okay so then we went on in investigated and found that that board is right right we have a you know rt derived board so at one point it is giving an, uh, one set of a dielectric constant another point it is giving another set of dielectric constant which is undesirable because we purchased locally so i don't know what has happened to the material so uh, this was causing the issue so uh, after incorporating for example this variation of a dielectric constant or lost tangent in the simulation we could ma you know match the simulated and measured gain to certain extent okay so that's why i'm saying so the substrate play a major role in the refractory performance that's what we want to see next is the effect of feed horn for example feed horn has a waveguide probe so probe is for example it should be you know it should be ortho, ortho, you know it should be like this but if you for example due to improper you know uh, uh, feed probe why, why, because you know you are measuring in the in measurement setup so when it rotates you no know, that time the probe get direction will get you know, disturbed that also affects the radiation pattern of the performance okay you can see here that so radiation pattern variation because of this wave get probe also happen now let's move on i think we have only six minutes more uh, four minutes more okay five minutes more okay uh, lens antennas as i said before so lens antennas also it's a you know alternative to parabolic reflector okay here uh, we had you know um, yeah you know reflector was there it was correcting the face whereas here uh, dielectric of this shape same uh, you know parabolic shape okay it is giving uh, a face correction therefore the collimated rays here you can see that yeah, the two operations are happening one is refraction and there is delay okay delay is due to dielectric uh, substrate uh, substrate thickness and also the dielectric constant refraction is for example you know if a wave hits on here by based on Snell's law it refracts like this right based on this we are getting this collimated rays and uh, this thickness of this uh, you know the shape of the lens uh, is uh, designed by uh, this uh, formula okay next is that and the other form other form of lens is that the metal backed lens here you can see that so this much uh, it's a huge and then it is uh, weight is also going to be too huge and cost wise it is going to be huge so that's why if we cross proposed that see you can see here that uh, by placing the reflect uh, reflector at the back side of this lens in front of the lens so he could reduce the lens thickness by one half okay so here the water all operation is happening refraction delay that is the inherent properties of lens the third operation is reflection so reflection by the ground plane so these these three are you know phenomena are uh, causing the planar phase spread okay next is and uh, now uh, metal black lens means what so it is also a kind of reflect you know you can see that it is a more close to a refractory right that's why that's why we wanted to compare with the refractory also 
I think uh, we have worked on that. So like, you know, conceptual equivalence of uh, refractory and artificial lens that this paper, you know, uh, was presented at IAMC. So here you can see that. So this lens, uh, these, are, these are all three operation is giving uh, a planar, planar wave front behind the feed horn, okay. Similarly in refractory also, we have the same kind of structure. You can see here that instead of lens, we have, you know, uh, patches, microscope patch, patch elements, okay. This is offered the, so from all this, what we can see that phase correction is, uh, is the major objective here, okay, phase correction. So how it is happening, uh, what element we are employing, what uh, uh, kind of structure we are employing is the matter here, okay. So here uh, we saw a simple lens, okay, and then metal back lens, then we saw printed elements. So all are doing phase correction only. You can see that it's a kind of equivalent structures because you know here also it has a ground plane, it also has a ground plane. And here it, we have a lens, but we are here we are having a printed patch elements. Okay. Here uh, the scattering of the elements that we discussed before. Okay, scattering of the elements, re-radiation that we already discussed while do while discussing the element design and the reflection by the ground plane is offering the phase correction. Okay. Now uh, this uh, this metal back lens antenna was you know uh, fabricated and uh, designed and sorry uh, it has. Uh, Prototype was developed and then measured. We got, you know, some guys. This uh, also published in uh, Microstrip, uh, sorry, MOTL. And uh, you can see that how it is designed. So uh, there is a, the, uh, see, here you can see that it's a smooth lens, right? So he, then in order to reduce the uh, thickness of this lens even more further, even further, uh, we went on approach called, you know, stepped lens approach based on the phase uh, refractory actually refractory method we employed and then uh, we found the each each and uh, every position what's what the phase to be compensated then based on that uh, the different dielectric thickness was uh, uh, you know, dielectric uh, unit cell was placed and then uh, we have designed the uh, uh, stepped lens loader reflector instead of having you know instead of having a planar lens you know like a convex lens we went for a stepped lens design so here also we could achieve, you know, reduced thickness and uh, this is the prototype we developed, okay. Next is artificial lens. There is a, another lens called artificial lens. So here also we are doing the phase correction. So initially how it was done is that, see, um, the sometime before I mentioned that substrate properties mainly influence the phase, phase, uh, phase properties, okay. So here what they have done is that, so they placed the cylinders uh, metallic cylinders at you know certain space with the uh, metallic cylinder of certain diameter with the certain uh, spacing they have placed they could achieve the uh, artificial lens what they are saying is that so they could achieve the uh, different uh, uh, dielectric constant profile okay different dielectric constant profile therefore the phase compensation is achieved okay and you can see that so and also this alternative to this uh, metallic cylinder so the operation is you have a cylinder like this, you have a cylinder like this. So both are filled with the air, okay. Air dielectric constant, what it should be? It should be, it is ideally, it is a, a dielectric, epsilon R is one. But when you place the dielectric, uh, no, sorry, metallic cylinder in that place, okay, if you measure the dielectric constant of this whole module, it will be different, right? The profile, uh, because in the prof, uh, here if you keep on placing the elements and then if you uh, see the dielectric constant profile, it will be different, okay. This can be alternatively accomplished by dielectric holes. So you have a dielectric in that you are drilling the holes. Okay, it is a complementary of that. Okay, you have instead of a cylinder, it is very difficult to place the cylinder in a, you know in the air apart, right? So in order to avoid that, they went for alternate high you know kind of alternative approach or you know uh, complementary approach. How they have done is that in a dielectric they have uh, you know uh, placed the holes. Uh, like you know you might have seen in um, uh, holes and the the you might have studied in your uh, semiconductor physics or somewhere okay next is that so this was uh, designed as a refractory kind of thing this was the unit cell it's uh, actually it's also a artificial lens but uh, designed using uh, refractory design method and um, third method is that for example you know you have a patch antenna if i want to en enhance the gain of this patch antenna you are placing the uh, refractor you know um, Substrate of different dielectric constant uh, on top of that, then you are achieving the uh, higher gain. 
So it will be something like this. You can see here the center you are placing the artiduride material and the edge you are placing the uh, fiber material. Therefore, you are getting the enhanced gain. Okay. Next is that. Uh, so the consolidating these points, how it will be? So how it is working is that you have a spherical waves incident on the uh, no uh, artificial lens which has a very dielectric constant profile. Okay. Therefore, you are getting the planar wave front. Okay. So it is uh, equivalent to you can see here that dielectric constant is much higher here, much lower here. Okay. So whether you are varying the in previous case uh, lens antenna, you are varying the thickness of the lens antenna, whereas here you are varying the dielectric constant of the substrate. Okay. Dielectric or you are you know using the different dielectric material of different dielectric constant. You know then you are arranging it certain fashion in order to get the planar wave front. This is called as artificial lens. Now consolidating this uh, all these points, you have feed here, okay. You have you know conventional lens or artificial lens, you will get the planar face front, okay. And if you have a reflector lens or refractory, you will get the planar face front at the behind the you know this structure, okay. This is what is we are doing, okay. So uh, ideally, what we are doing is we are doing the phase correction. That's all. The way we do the structure that we use is the different, but all the functions is all are doing same function called phase correction. Either you could you can talk about reflector lens or lens or compact and artificial lens or conventional lens or parabolic reflector or anything. All are doing phase correction only. Okay, for incident spherical wave, you are correcting the phase and then you are uh, ensuring the you know you are uh, ensuring the planar phase front. Okay, so that's all. Uh, I think I hope uh, I was on on time. <laughs>